Hello, boys and girls. Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast here once again. Today, I'm going to show you how to make the Purple Hooter Shooter, which is the featured cocktail in today's episode. I'm going to take a shot glass. A large shot glass, I'm thinking. First, we're going to add vodka. One and a half ounces. That's a shot right there, right? Next, we're going to add a dash of raspberry liqueur. Dash. And one half an ounce lime juice. Half an ounce. There you go. There you have the purple Hooter shooter. Eh, not so purple. I don't know, let's see. Not bad though. Yeah, not bad. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. See ya. In the movie Terror Train, this week's episode of the Scary Spirits Podcast, number 36, we find out that Baptists aren't allowed to play cards. Greg confirms this is true, as his ex-Baptist relatives are huge card players. This just goes to show you that most everyone wants what someone says they can't have. I myself am unfamiliar with this aversion to gambling. I mean, since grade school, I've been going to church festivals, playing bingo, and slapping quarters down on the big six wheel. All in good fun, of course. Everyone is different, and we at the Scary Spirits Podcast pass no judgment and encourage you to practice whatever brings you comfort. Oh, and if you're wondering, always bet on six. Cheers. Welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready, let's go. Hi, I'm Greg. Hey, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast, the podcast that combines the two very different but highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? Fabulous. How are you, Greg? I'm okay. Not excited about the new year? (laughs) New beginnings? Well, I guess there is that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> still a few days away though. geez so sorry greg that you're gonna make it to another new year you know the whole post christmas depression and all that shit uh, karen gotcha, you know how gotcha. it is the highs are high and the lows are low yep how was your christmas karen excellent good no easy bake oven but you, know. <laughs> you already got that for your birthday i did you don't need to <laughs> no i do not Okay, cool. How was yours, Greg? It was fantastic as always, Karen. Karen, I believe this film was my choice, this very special New Year's Eve edition of the Scary Spirits podcast. It was mine, wasn't it? It was yours, yes. Okay. The movie I have chosen is Terror Train from 1980, Karen, starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Karen, do you remember 1980? 
I think we've already covered 1980. Yeah, 1980. The 80s were good. I think we agreed. They were good. 80s will always be good. It's a shame you don't know it when you're in it. You only know it when you're looking back. Well, not exactly, but you know what I mean. You don't realize how fun it was. If if I could turn back time, Karen. Okay, share. (laughs) I don't want to turn back time. I don't want to do that. No, no, no. Not at all. No, I don't either. I just want to be clear. Not at all. I'm good. (laughs) Well, would you like to know why I chose this film, Karen? Do you have any ideas? Well, it is a New Year's Eve theme, so I'm guessing that's what, but. Or was it the bare breasts? Because we've been in a dry spell for a while. Well, I didn't know there were any bare breasts before I picked it. With an 80s slasher film starring Jamie Lee Curtis, one can always hope. High probability, I would say. <laughs> yes, no, I primarily picked it because it was a New Year's Eve film. It happens on New Year's Eve. All of the events in this film, Karen, happen on New Year's Eve. Yeah, I've always found New Year's Eve to be a big letdown. <laughs> Never had one quite like this. Yeah, me too. Just, but there's just I'm, all I'm this build up. And, <laughs> but even when I was younger, and I, I always stay up because I'm a late nighter. But even when I was younger and I would go to parties, it was always like, eh, you know, just never lived up to the hype, I guess. Again, I'm, I'm blaming that post-Christmas depression. Yeah, maybe it was like you had to go back to school afterwards or something. I don't know. Yes. But it's always good to make it to another year. I suppose hope <laughs> springs eternal, as they say, right? You only have to make three more days, right? <laughs> yep. Three more days. <laughs> okay, Eeyore, let's go. All right. We have a Bounce drink, back. Karen, as well. Yes, we do. We have an interesting drink. What is it? The drink I have chosen is called the Purple Hooter Shooter. Would you like to know why I chose this drink, Karen? I would, because I couldn't figure it out even after watching this movie. Apparently in my research looking for a drink for this film, I discovered that this drink, the Purple Hooter Shooter, was one of Groucho Marx's favorites. Ah, okay. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Very creative. Deep, deep dive in there, Karen. Yeah, absolutely. Getting in the tall grass. <laughs> <laughs> would, would you like to know how to make it, Karen? I would. So we're going to need one and a half ounces of vodka. It's a shot, people. So, But so, it's a know. tall shot. It is. I learned that. You know, it's vodka, not a short shot. Yeah. Vodka alone is a shot. Yes. Then to that, we're going to add a dash of raspberry liqueur. I used the cheap. The Cooper Rasmataz, Karen, what did you use? The only one they had at the store. Sham, what is it? Sham board or? I don't know, something like that. But it's the top shelf shit, right? Yeah, and I went and got it and then I only needed a dash. I was not happy, <laughs> but it's good. And we're going to need some lime juice. One half an ounce of the lime juice from the plastic green lime, Karen. Or if you're using real limes, it's about a half a lime. Squeezed. Wow, that's a lot. Well, it depends on the line, but... Would you like to know how to make it, Karen? We all would like to know how to make it, Greg. We're going to pour all of those ingredients into a shot glass and serve, Karen. And then enjoy? Well, yeah. I, I haven't tasted it yet, so I don't know. <laughs> well, I've tasted it because it overflowed my tiny shot glass and I had to sip it. It smells good. It does. It's, it's good. It's vodka-y. Yeah, it's not bad. I might have used a little bit more than a dash of the raspberry liqueur. I mean, how much is a yeah, dash? I agree. I don't know. <laughs> so I put like a teaspoon in, probably. You yeah, know? Yeah, about that much. All right, Karen. Should we give our listener time to make their own? Shouldn't take long. So, nope. Hold on. And we're back. Welcome back. Yes. And I should say, if if I sound different to our listener, it's because I'm in a different studio today, Karen. It sounds different mm-hmm. to me. Does it sound different to you? Uh, not really. Okay. There's a lot more reverb in here. Oh. Which, I don't know. I may like it. I don't know. 
Usually he's in the man cave downstairs. I am. All right, Karen, might you have a brief synopsis for this film? I do, Greg. Oh, thank God. (laughs) One of these times I'm going to forget. Please. And you'll be so devastated. Please, Karen, read it to us. Terror Train. Three years after a prank went terribly awry, the six college students responsible are targeted by a masked killer at a New Year's Eve party aboard a moving train. Accurate. Yep. Concise. All right. Anything else before we get into it anymore? Chit chat. Things we need to cover from last week's episode, Scrooge. No, just don't be one in the new year. Yes. Are are you talking to me specifically, Karen? Why would you think that? We're talking to our audience in general. You know, it's just a general statement. Okay. It's nothing to do with anyone personally. All right. That's what I thought. Just want to be sure. Just making sure. All right, Karen, you ready to get into it? Let's get on the train. All aboard. (laughs) All right, Karen, we start with a bonfire and a bunch of beanies I have written. The boys are wearing beanies, yes. It's cold out, so it's uh, winter. (laughs) Yeah, and apparently it's a fraternity's New Year's Eve party. It does appear to be. Yes, did you make a note of the fraternity? Yeah, Epsilon Phi Omega, but I don't think it's real. Okay, I, I I tried... I tried to find it and and I couldn't find it. There was a sorority, but then there's branches underneath major fraternities and sororities. And I know nothing about that. So I don't know if it's real or not. If anyone does email us at info at scary spirits.com and let us know. I was just about to ask Karen while my mic was turned off. <laughs> were you in a sorority? No, no. You're not a sorority girl? No. I don't want to be disparaging, but no, (laughs) not at all. All right. Why? Were you in a fraternity? No, no, Karen, I was not. You didn't rush? No, I didn't. Well, no. (laughs) I, you know, I like the band rush, Karen. I've seen rush about 13 times, but no, I did not rush. You did not rush a fraternity. No, it's not, not for me. Okay. Me either. You do you, as we like to say. Never much of a joiner, I guess. Shocking. (laughs) And you would think I would be? (laughs) I don't know. know, At least maybe an honors fraternity sorority or something to have those for like doctors. I don't know. Probably. It seems like all these frat boys are pre-med. This might be a special pre-med fraternity. Yeah, those are the kind of guys I want in in medical school. (laughs) Okay. I don't know. I knew some pre-med like that. And we meet Jamie Lee Curtis. Apparently her name is Elena. Yeah, there's a group of boys kind of just talking. Half of them have beanies on. And apparently those are the boys who are rushing the fraternity. So you can't take the beanie off until you have sex. Yeah, they're virgins. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's but, what I thought you were going to say. Not the boys well, but, rushing the fraternity. They're the well, virgins. Yes, but I think it's partly they can't get into the fraternity. I'm not sure. I couldn't tell. But yes, they are. They're the virgins. virgins. They yes. have to keep their beanies on until they lose their virginity or until they are deflowered, Karen. So the group of boys point out Jamie Lee Curtis, basically objectify her. And then she doesn't seem to mind, though. No, it's weird. And they're telling a kid that she chose him for whatever reason. Yeah, and they Kenny. can't believe it. They... Kenny. Oh my God. Kenny. <laughs> yeah. <You know, laughs> which comes into play later. And uh, she leaves and they all follow her. Yes. And then here's what I wrote about Kenny. He reminds me of a serial killer. <laughs> In what way? He looks like that one dude. What was that Southern California serial killer dude? The dark hair. Like had like a pentagram carved into his hand and stuff. I have no idea. Oh, God. It seems like it's a hazing event, though. Like, they're kind of forcing him to do this. They've told this kid that she's oh, ready is. to be his first. I think it's the Night Stalker. Richard Ramirez killed 14 people and tortured dozens of others before being captured in 1985, Karen. Well, that qualifies. So this predates him, actually, the movie, which is interesting because it's almost like when they were casting the film, they look for someone who looked just like him to be this guy to play Kenny. 
Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I didn't quite understand what was happening here because the girls went up to the room and Jamie Lee Curtis is saying, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't even know this guy. And I'm thinking, is she just going to have sex with somebody she doesn't know? And Karen, then- Karen, it, it's 1980, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still wouldn't have done that. But anyway, <laughs> but that's not exactly what happens. Nope. So basically they lure this Kenny kid up to the bedroom, right? Starts, yeah, the boys are encouraging him downstairs. There's yes. a girl upstairs who we find out is what? What's her name? Mitchie. Is that Mitchie? Yeah. yeah, encouraging him to come up the stairs. And there's like disco lighting, kind of. It's yep. dark. Mood lighting, Karen. That's, that's that's. Is that what that was? It was yes. lights going on and off. So I don't know. <laughs> and they get him to go into the bedroom, and he starts taking off his clothes or whatever. And Jamie Lee Curtis from behind the bed says, um, "It's my first time too." Don't be nervous or some shit like that. And she keeps saying, kiss me, Kenny. Kiss, kiss me, me, Kenny. Yeah. So Kenny gets into bed with who he believes is Elena, played by Jamie Lee Curtis. And turns out it's a cadaver. Yeah. So he leans in and it's not, yeah, it's not Jamie Lee Curtis because she's <laughs> no. behind a curtain behind the bed. So he thinks it's her talking to him, but it's not. It's a cadaver. Right. And Kenny freaks out. Yeah, he goes nuts. And all and I, the kids laugh at him, which is... At first, I thought he like uh, asphyxiated himself. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, he kind of gets wrapped up in <laughs> linens or <tool>. something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly where that came from. Then we have credits. Yeah, but right before that, I wrote in my notes, the killer is Kenny. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's what I wrote. And then you cut to credits and there's a train on the tracks. Yeah, I kind of... well. Of course, Karen, I always read ahead before I watch these. So I kind of knew, or at least I thought I knew who the killer was. They were kind of like, they kind of like almost like. Yeah, there's, yeah. I mean, stay tuned. Made me change my mind because I was like, well, was I right? <laughs> but okay, we'll get there. But that's just, I just thought that was funny because that's what I wrote in my notes. Before they even run the credits, I'm like the killer's Kenny. <laughs> Then we have credits. Then I made a note, Sandy Curry. For some reason, that name jumped out at me. I don't know why. And David Copperfield, Karen, as the magician. Yeah. So next thing, Karen, we see on the screen is three years later. And, That's true. And they're all getting off a bus and there's more beanies. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's the whole fraternity. Again, and even, they, they're even pulled the up to, probably, I think that's when you rush when you're a freshman. I don't know, but they pull up to steam train excursions yeah. and the kids all get off the bus and you're right. There's more beanies. And we learned that Elena is now dating one of the frat boys who was Mo, I believe. Yeah. Pre-med Mo. <laughs> well, and he says, you know, he's doing this for her because she wouldn't let him get her a graduation gift, right. but it's new year's Eve. So I was confused because why is she graduating in January when graduations are in June, but later we find out she's graduating early because she needs to work before she goes to medical school to raise some money. She must've doubled up some classes and she's graduating early. And they toast, they make a toast on the bus there and they're drinking Schlitz. I made a note of that too. I've never had Schlitz. It's pretty terrible, I would guess. Is uh, it? I'm pretty sure I've had it, but I don't remember it. So there you go. It's not memorable. It's a college beer. Everybody's in a co everybody's in costumes. Yeah. So apparently it's a New Year's Eve masquerade party. And they are all seniors now, all the people who we saw earlier. And they are all pre-med. This is where I learned they're pre-med. All of them are. And we well, all of the group. So they're probably friends. I mean, you would assume they all have classes together and stuff because yeah. they're all the same major. Then we cut to, um, I guess, the conductor. Well, they do introduce the magician. They show him on the side of the train. And they also show a blow-up doll that yeah. one of the guys has as his date. But the, before that, the conductor tells the girl in his office there that he wishes there was a radio on board the train in case of an emergency. 
Yeah, I have it. I know I have that after. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah they talk about bad weather and that there's no radio on the train. Oh, maybe it was. So we did see David probably before that. And the kids are all hyped up. I think they're already drunk. Then we see Ed. Well, we've already met Ed, who's dressed like Groucho Marx. Yeah, he was the one with the blow up doll. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He was. So he's he's the jokester of the bunch, I guess. We see him walking with a sword through his gut. And everyone thinks that it's a part of his costume, you know, a prank, a gag, because, you know, he's 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 the funny man, you know? Yeah. So why couldn't he say anything? Don't know. You know, like I, I, I expected when his mask was pulled off that his mouth would have been taped because, hmm. you know, he's got a sword through him and he's walking towards his friends and he doesn't say anything right but we do see his mask taken off and so basically someone's taking his mask and his costume for the most part right yeah and rolls him under the train rolls him under the train tracks and he gone so 13 minutes in greg first one gone yep and someone is in ed's costume and the train runs over poor ed yeah and there's a costume party going on on the train and then we see david copperfield again and He's not very happy with the crowd. He doesn't think they He's will be. He's kind of a... creepy looking. They make him very creepy looking. Well, he, he is creepy looking. <laughs> I always thought he was so cute when I was a kid with all his TV specials and everything. I thought he was handsome. I thought he was gay. Nothing is wrong he? with that. No. Oh. I don't think. He was married to, what's her name for a while, right? But he used to have all those specials when we were kids. Yes, I know. You know? I thought he was cute. He was annoying. I thought. <laughs> you didn't ever want to be a magician when you were a kid? Yeah, I did, actually. I always thought it'd be cool to learn just a couple tricks. But it takes a lot of practice and concentration. I know, and some, I guess I know I... some car tricks. So then the uh, seniors are in one of the train cars, and they're kind of telling the story about what happened three years earlier about the prank that went bad. Yeah, they call it the seniors only car. Yeah, they said that uh, the school abolished it because something happened, freaked a bunch of kids out of school, and then kids got kicked out of school. I wrote obviously the wrong ones because they're still around. But I, I think Doc says almost kicked out. Right. He yeah. corrects him. So. And then we see Groucho Marx on the train, the killer. Yeah, in Ed's costume. Yes, and that's all I wrote. <laughs> But we learned that the conductor is a Winnebago salesman, <laughs> Aaron. Doc talks about how he got a job at the medical center, and that's how he got the cadaver. Right, correct. To put in the bed. So basically they were janitors. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis walks in and says he put a kid in the hospital. And then all I have is the conductor and the coal shoveler argue about the trains and their importance in society. Yep. Yep. And the conductor is a Winnebago salesman. He's looking to retire, I think, and sell Winnebagos. But then I wrote, we have see a girl in a low cut blouse. Yeah, I said girl in the hall dressed as what? What is she supposed to be? But that's Mitchy, apparently. Yeah, but they're all in costume. Like right. Jamie and Lee they're Curtis all in couples a... costumes, too. Oh, yeah, because Jamie Lee Curtis is a pirate and her boyfriend's a parrot. Right. But her oh. boyfriend, Doc, is dressed as a monk or something. Yeah. So I'm not sure what she is. I mean, she does very... have an old woman mask she puts on every now and then. Yeah, but that's not an old woman outfit. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I mean, you do you. Yeah. I'm fine if you wear that. But that's not a typical old woman outfit for a costume. I couldn't figure out what she was dressed as. But she, she runs into Ed. Or Groucho. Yes. <laughs> Groucho Marx. Sorry, who and, she thinks is Ed. Right, yeah. And gets gets a joint from Groucho. Next, we see the dude in the lizard costume. Him and Groucho talk in the hall of the cabin there. And Lizard Man, <laughs> who's Jackson, asked mm -hmm. um, Groucho if he wants to drink. He says, yeah. So they go into the bathroom because apparently Jackson has his own personal stash and he doesn't want anyone to know he has it. I don't know. But they go in the bathroom and Groucho takes off his mask. And Jackson says, oh, it's you, or whatever. He says, oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he recognizes him. Yes. And Groucho slams his head into a mirror. Which is weird, because he's in that thick 
lizard mask. He takes it off though. Not no, he just slams his head in the meat. I I rewound it's above it. his head. You can see his face. I don't think so. Because I, I thought I rewound it. He's talking to him the whole time. You can talk through a mask. Okay. I don't know. I thought his mask was still on, but whatever. Doesn't matter. He gets, he's gone, as you <laughs> like to say. Yeah. Next, we see the seniors getting high. Okay. And then we see this dynamic with Doc, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Mo. Elena. S- yes. So does Doc <laughs> like Elena? Or does Doc like Mo? <laughs> because I don't think he likes. I don't know. He's trying to break them up through this yeah. whole movie. So who is he after? It. I thought it was Jamie Lee Curtis, but mm. later Elena. But later, the way he's talking to Mo, I'm thinking eh, could be Mo. Could be Mo. Don't know. Didn't really go there, but yeah, I guess. Because during this moment. Doc lets it slip that it was his idea for the train and not Moe's. Right. And Mm -hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis, Elena gets very angry because, but Doc did that on purpose to make her angry with Mo. And apparently Moe's got all, all the cash dollars. Yes. But apparently Elena swore she would never go to another one of Doc's parties. Right. Next we see Groucho exiting the bathroom and he locks it. And here's where I wrote, Elena is a pirate and her boyfriend is a parrot. Clever. <laughs> That's when I realized, oh, I get it. <laughs> nice. So then David Copperfield does some magic, some close-up magic with Elena. Yeah, they have a little bit of a connection. He does the old quarter in the cigarette trick, Karen. I'd never seen that before. Have you seen Seriously? You know that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an old... You can do that one? If I have the right instruments, I probably could. <laughs> the trick. The trick quarter. But she's carrying it. Oh, does he switch it? Sleight of hand. Yeah. Yeah. Not to give away any you know, magician secrets. Yeah, because you're supposed to be sworn to secrecy. Well, I'm not a magician. so. Do you know where the first magician, they think the first magician was? Camelot. <laughs> Merlin. Merlin. No, they just, it's not a, really a big deal, but they think it was ancient Egypt. Sleight of hand tricks originated there, they think. Yeah, makes sense. Next, we see the train crew. I guess the conductor is doing card tricks with the other guy, the brake man or whatever he is. Yeah, with their signs on their caps. Yeah. He looked just like they, somebody just kind of stuck them on there with a little bit of scotch tape or something. They didn't yeah. bend with the cap. They stayed straight. They were just cardboard. It's pretty yes. funny. And they're drinking Budweiser and Miller. Yeah. <laughs> but the brake man says uh, he was like Baptist, raised Baptist, regular Baptist or something and never touches cards. So he refuses to pick a card. <laughs> oh, is that true? Weren't you a Baptist in your I'm youth? Not. No, I <laughs> never was. In your toddler years? No, never was. Oh, okay. My mother was, but. Oh, I was going to say, how come I? That's think why that? she is such a voracious card player now, Karen. Oh, <laughs> she was never allowed to play cards. Same with her, my uncle. Same with all of them. Whenever they got together, when they were all living, all my aunts and uncles I broke out the cards. cards. That's the first thing we did. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> they were never allowed. It's, it's okay. The work of the devil, Karen. Don't you know? Obviously, that's true. Then. I mean, not that it's the work of the devil, that if you're Baptist, you can't touch the cards. I'd never heard that before. So, yeah. you know, us Catholics, we, oh, we, yeah. we can touch Beers the cards. Beers for Jesus. <laughs> Beers for Jesus, bingo for Jesus. We're, we're letting the kids play the big Roulette. six wheel. Yep. <laughs> yep. The big six, six, six wheel. Yep. Next, we see Jackson and Ed's dates. And they are wondering where Jackson and Ed are. And I got Jackson and his dates costume. Like she's like a mermaid and he's like a sea creature, right? So I figured that pair out. But Ed is Groucho. And I can't tell what his date is. Groucho's pants. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't know what she, I don't know if she was with him, but I couldn't figure out what she was supposed to be. Her, She's wearing... A pair of men's pants with suspenders 
just all the way up over her cleavage, Mm -hmm. you know, so almost like, like a poor man. Remember in the cartoons when the Mm -hmm. poor man would wear the barrel, Mm -hmm. remember it was kind of like that, but it was pants. And then there was a hand stuck in it. It was hand in her cleavage coming out. It was weird. I don't know what she was. But Groucho wasn't wearing pants. So I don't know if that's, I don't know. I didn't really get it. And then Elena and Mo argue about something. I don't know. They're still arguing about the train. And Elena never forgave. And Doc. Doc for setting up Kenny. And then David Copperfield does his little magic show on the train. I wrote the disco magician. Yes. And everybody claps. I mean, he's got like, like rouge on or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. He, he's got makeup on and stuff. And he's like doing his little card, fancy card tricks to disco music. And he's got the big 70s collar on. And, and the ruffles. Yeah. Yeah. The ruffled shirt. I mean, this is 1980, Karen. <laughs> I still thought he was cute. He's got the big bull hair, too. Still cute. <laughs> he looks better now. I like his hair better now. But anyway. Then, it was the 80s. That's not a bad. There were some bad haircuts in the 80s. That, you know. So I guess Doc asks where everyone is. And Mo, I think, tells him they're all watching the magician. And Doc says, we didn't hire a magician. He's doing a show with his assistant where she rises from the table. And the table moves out from under her. I know, but I Doc know says should... they didn't hire a magician. They <laughs> did. He does say that. <laughs> but I. That's kind I of important. <laughs> It's very important. But I said, this is also weird. And I don't, I said not to be rude, but the assistant looks like a man. (laughs) I kind of, I I thought I recognized her from like way back in the eighties. I thought she was his, I think it probably was her, but we'll get there. So then, and this is where I write. Yeah. So I wrote, so who does doc love (laughs) Elena or Mo? (laughs) I know. They just go off with Jackson and Ed's girlfriends. Doc and Mo do. Yeah, but before that, David Copperfield uses the hula hoop to go over the body to show that there are no wires. Yeah, that was bad. What do you mean? That's the classic, using the hula hoop. I know, but I was watching. I'm like, you you skipped a part there, David, right there in the center. (laughs) But whatever. Well, everyone was impressed. Yeah. You're just not easily impressed. You just gotta be, that's what I mean. I was more impressed with his stupid car tricks, pulling cards out of thin air. Go with the, go with the joy. Just enjoy the moment. All right. Yes. But the guys pick up the the girls who don't have boyfriends and they just leave with them. Yeah. Which that's just such a dick bag. Yeah. Elena and Mitchie are in the, watching the magician, right? Yeah. That's when Doc and Mo just. Leave with the other girls. And Mitchie sees them. Yeah. But so she, like, yeah. So she tells, she says, let's dance to Jamie Lee Curtis to yeah, distract she her. She doesn't want Elena to know, right? But I she think the feel singer like this in the happens band, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think the singer in the band looked like David Byrne? A young David Byrne? Uh, you didn't notice. I kind of think the band looked like talking heads a little bit. Now that you yeah. mention it, because they had a chick bass player. And yeah, I did. I don't know if that was something they copied, but it looked a lot like him for sure. Then the um, conductor goes and opens the locked bathroom, Karen, and he finds Jackson in his lizard man costume with blood everywhere. Yep. I think he gone. Yeah, he's gone. Lots of blood. <laughs> Next, we see Mitchie putting on her mask, her old woman mask, and she leaves the dance. And she stops and smokes a joint from some dude. I thought she was going to go down on him for a minute. <laughs> well, it was the eighties, I guess. Because she got and, like he was. We see his back is to us, you know. I didn't notice, but oh my, and she goes down on her knees and like, I guess he's got the joint down between his legs, and she takes it from him. And here's where I wrote: there's lots of pot smoking in this movie, but you know it was the eighties, so. Well, and I did note that. <laughs> Copperfield does hone in on Elena. Elena very creepily. Then the conductor tells the other crew members about the body in the bathroom. Of course, there's no radio. So the engineer decides he's going to speed it up a little bit to get to the station quicker. Yeah. 
He does. And the conductor and the other crewman, I think the boiler man. The shoveler. Yeah. The one that had the, didn't it say boiler man on his hat? It might have. I don't know. But they go to check on the body and he is no longer dead, Karen. <laughs> well, he's. He is risen. Yeah, he, he He's Lazarus. <laughs> He has come back. There's no blood anywhere. Still in his and, lizard man costume. Yes. But they, they think he's drunk. So Mitchie comes along and says, oh, Jackson, I'll help you. Whatever. And I keep waiting for Mitchie to fall out of her shirt, but she never does, I don't think. I didn't see that. But. <laughs> but anyway. But I wasn't hoping for it, so, you know. Oh, and she trying to get the lizard guy to, you know, be romantic with her. <laughs> is, that what you're, is that what the kids call it these days sure well i think she's mad because she saw doc go off with another girl so i think well his his girlfriend jackson's girlfriend yes but she saw them so she's yeah you know, so she sees kind of jackson's girlfriend so mitchy sees jackson's girlfriend and doc coming towards them i didn't notice that but yeah well yeah and she pulls him up she pulls Jackson, who she thinks is Jackson, up into her bed compartment, and he jumps right up. He's not drunk anymore. And right. This is when she tries to convince him to have relations or whatever. Yeah, she's being very romantic, as she would say. Yeah. She's trying to seduce him a little bit. But he takes a hand and starts... He well, tries to start to cop a feel with a dead person's well, hand. Well, first he has his glove, his costume hand on, and she asks him, you know, can you lose the fin? <laughs> oh, she does. That's right. Yeah. And that's when he takes a severed hand and she says something like, well, you know what they say, cold hands, warm heart. <laughs> Is that what they say, Karen? Cold hands, warm heart. Depends on who they are. They say lots of things. They do. And he covers her mouth and pretty sure she gone is what I wrote. Because we cut immediately to David Copperfield and Elena. Yeah, they're flirting. Yeah. Is this when he does the trick with the rose and all that shit? Or yeah. Is that later? No, it's now. Okay. Nobody seems all that tethered to their significant other in this movie. It's, it's, it's 1980, Karen. <laughs> you could still be tethered in 1980. Well, I don't think. Greg. I think. Well, I think Mo. Mo's okay, I think, because he. He really tries to like. No, I get yeah. In a minute, we'll chick see, away, right? Yeah, we'll see that Mo's an okay guy in a minute. Doc right. is not, but Jamie Lee Kurt or Elena is intrigued by the magician. She's yeah. Yeah, she says you do this for all your fans. Like now, she's a fan. And he says no, first time. I mean, they have a connection, but she, I'm the just... last thing he tells her is after the show, Elena, or something like that. Okay, whatever. I don't know how he knew her name. He's David Copperfield. I guess that's true. <laughs> Power of observation. Hear people calling her by name. You know who, who know her name. I know, but I thought that was supposed to be some sort of hint. So then Doc tells Elena that Mo is really sorry and wants to apologize. So yeah, so Doc is trying to get Mo in trouble again. He is, yeah. So who does he love, Elena oh, or no. Mo? And then we cut yeah. back to Mo and Ed's girlfriend. And she's trying, she's trying really hard to seduce Mo, but he's resisting her feminine charms. Yeah, she basically loses all her clothes. Yeah, we do see two bare breasts here. Natural. <laughs> Natural. Mm -hmm. Next, we see the conductor, and he's trying to figure out what happened to Jackson. How could he be dead and bloody one minute? And then the next minute, he's fine. Yeah, he wants to know what happened to the blood and the busted mirror. Well, the mirror is still busted. But all the blood is off of right. it. So I think he has like a light bulb moment there or something. And he runs off. And next we see David Copperfield again. Karen doing some more magic shit. Yeah. And Doc's being a jealous heckler. Yeah. Obviously, Doc likes to be the king of the room. He wants to be the prettiest princess. He doesn't <laughs> want David Copperfield to be the prettiest princess. He's heckling pretty hard. And we see the conductor in the sleeper car. I guess he's going back to the bathroom to have another look. And as he's walking by, Mitchie's arm falls out of her bunk. Well, first he finds her shoe on the ground. Yes. And he picks it up and he's walking, kind of looking in the sleeping compartment a little bit. Yeah. Then the, the hand falls out. 
Yes. And the arm, it's still attached. Yes. <laughs> Her arm falls through the curtains so that he can see it. It's still attached. But the gun doctor opens the curtains and finds that Mitchie has her throat slit and she gone. Yep. So next, the conductor finds Elena and convinces her to go with him. And yeah. he's holding the shoe. Yes. Wants to know, do you know whose shoes this is? Yeah. She says, yeah, it's my friend. I'll give it to her. But she says, no, just come with me. Just come with me. Please, miss, come with me. And he takes her into. I don't a, know why he singles her out. Is there a reason? I don't know. You know, like, why is he talking to her about, is it just because she recognizes the shoe or? Maybe. But he takes her up to where the cruise area is. Well, she almost busts Mo because she's trying to get in to see Mo and he realizes that Doc set him up. You know, that's kind of a light bulb moment for him. But yeah, then they go to the conductor takes her somewhere away from everyone else that looks like his office space or whatever. And he tells her that Mitchie is dead. And he have, shows her. Well, then we have David Copperfield again. That's what I have. And then Elena finds Mitchie. And sees she her. loses it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as you would, that's her best friend. All right. And here's where I wrote Doc is a dick. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> <laughs> is he still heckling David Copperfield? He is. Okay. He, but he's doing the magic trick. Oh, is this the one with the switchblade? Yeah, yeah, where he's going to tell him his card and yeah. he's going to do it without looking. So he covers the cards because Doc's yelling, this is third grade stuff. This is easy. It's amateur. And then David Copperfield covers the cards with a piece of newspaper and drops the knife and then pulls the newspaper away. And it's Doc's card. Doc has signed his name. And then the next thing I have is I think the conductor has figured something out. He finds a bloody rag in the bathroom. Yes. And then there's more David Copperfield I wrote. <laughs> Next, we have the conductor searching the bathroom. And he finds the bloody. Yeah. like Shit. Well, it's just like, it looked like one rag. And there, when you first saw Jackson in there, when he was dead, there was blood everywhere. And then he picks up this little washcloth that's got a few stains of blood on it. And that whole place is pristine. There is not one drop of blood in there. It was pretty funny. That was some magical cleaning. Yeah, so now we come back to David Copperfield doing the show again, but now Mo is unresponsive. That was so weird. It was weird. All of a sudden, Mo is just dead or won't wake up. Sorry, don't mean to jump ahead. Mo won't wake up. Yeah, and Doc is screaming for help, but no one believes him. Yeah, because it's like the boy who cried wolf. Right. Doc's the joker, so no one believes anything he's saying is, you know. Doc carries Mo back to like the cabin car or something and they lay him down and try to figure out what's wrong with him and doc keeps saying oh my god i'm a i'm a pre-med student i'm a <laughs> i know like that means nothing people why can't i figure you, this out you learn no medical training <laughs> as a pre-med student at least back so in eventually the they undo his shirt and they, he's got a big gash down his chest it looked like to me i don't know how he got it but and I just wrote, do they want us to believe the killer is David Copperfield? Because he kind of disappeared from the stage and then and then was sort of behind Mo for a little bit. Yes. And then Mo and was I, unresponsive. I believe they think they want us to think it's David Copperfield. So then Doc asks about Mitchie and Elena tells him that she gone. So the conductor runs up. Oh, no, Doc pulls the brake cable to stop the train. And the conductor's there and says, well, brace, we're, brace, we're going to come to a halt. But it doesn't. So he's like, uh-oh. Yeah, that can't be good. Something ain't right. So he runs up to see what happened to Walter, who's the engineer, I guess. Calls him Walter. Yeah, he, the conductor says Walter should have hit the brakes and goes to find him. But Walter ain't there. He's not in the locomotive. So the conductor starts to put on the brakes. <laughs> Everyone goes flying. And the train eventually stops. Conductor gets everyone off the train and he begins a search for the killer. He has the crew searching the train, right? Well, and he holds he takes up a the, roll call. First, he holds up the hat of the coal guy the, yeah. and it's bloody. And he says, I wonder what happened to him. He's can, just gone. I, yeah. I couldn't tell if it was bloody or not. Yeah, it was a bloody, his bloody hat. It's pretty dark. Yeah, it, I agree. 
And then, yeah, everybody off the train into the cold and the staff's going to search the cars. So you take, they take roll call once everyone gets off the train. And then Elena tells Doc that she thinks it's the kid they pranked, Kenny. She tells him that she went and saw him in the hospital after they pranked him, but they wouldn't let her see her because they said he had killed someone in the past. He ain't right, apparently, Karen. Which is interesting information to be dropping just now after three (laughs) years, but whatever. Yeah, she didn't even tell Mo. I mean, but he, the conductor tells everyone to take their masks off and stick with their friends. So. And here's where I wrote the train staff don't be seem to searching very be searching very hard. No, because <laughs> they're walking right past the the um, sleeping <laughs> chambers or whatever, and they're not even looking at any. They're of not them. opening any doors. They're not, they're not doing, doing anything. anything. They're just walking down the down the train. That's it. Nothing. Not opening in the, any doors. Not looking in. Whatever. So then the conductor tries to get everyone back on the train. Doc first doc drags Jamie Lee Curtis, Elena back into onto the train by themselves. They're in a room by themselves. And he locks her in the cab. Yeah. He thinks he's trying to keep them safe from Kenny. And they get out the yearbook and well, the kids outside are getting edgy because they're freezing. They're in costumes, which aren't warm, you know, but Elena and doc are in there already looking at a year, an old yearbook. And they look up Kenny and they see what, Greg? He was a magician, Karen. Yes. So they think David Copperfield is, is Kenny. David Copperfield. But they think he's Kenny. Yes, they do. Well, they call him Ken. Even that's his name is Ken in the movie. His assistant oh, calls him Ken. I thought the conductor it was Kim. calls him Ken. Oh, no, they I call didn't... him Ken. All right. I didn't catch that. Yeah. That would have been a big, that's a big clue. Big ass clue I missed. That is. Yeah, but the conductor tries to get everyone back on the train. They don't want to go. They want to go home. And he says, you can't walk home. There's no roads out here. You'll freeze to death. We don't want to get back on the train with a killer. <laughs> yeah. Which is reasonable, but they're going to freeze if they stay outside. Right. So back in Doc's cabin, Elena wants to warn everyone. Doc says he is staying where he is. And he ends up locking Elena out. She gets out and he locks the door. Don't let her back in. He's, I think he says something about survival of the fittest or something at one point. There's somebody out there. It's a staff member, but he's like, you're on your own. Yeah. All we see is a guy running down the train with an ax. <laughs> yeah. And it, but it's a staff member. It's not, the, yeah, yeah. It's the brake man or whatever. So Doc's in his room alone. And Doc is getting paranoid. He starts checking all the closets and all the spaces in his room. Yeah. That anybody could be. The luggage compartment up high, the any closets, all the doors he's opening. And he opens one, nothing. Opens another, nothing. Opens a third one, nothing. But he sees something, looks like he like, I couldn't really tell what he was going after. Something under the bed across. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't tell. tell. It looked like a pile of clothes or something. But as he's walking towards that way, a hand comes out, a finger painted hand. Yep. <laughs> a hand Nails with finger painted. Paints. Painted nails and pulls him, nails and pulls him back, but he gets away. The hand is put on his shoulder as he's leaning up against the wall. He's kind of freaked out. He's wigging out. And so and then, then he, he looks and he thinks it's Mitchy, right? Yeah, because it's got her ring. Oh, okay. And painted nails. Yeah. And then his throat is slit. He gone. Yeah, Doc <laughs> thinks it's a joke. He's like, oh, it's all a joke because he, he right. thinks it's Mitchy's hand and she's not really dead. And he thinks that he's being pranked. Correct. Is it a switchblade? Because that would it almost look back... like a straight razor to me. Oh, because that would tie back to the trick. But I don't. It just occurred to me if it was a switchblade, mm-hmm. it would go right back to David Copperfield mm-hmm. with the cards. But I don't know if it was or not. Hmm. Don't know either. But next, we're cut back to David Copperfield again. Being creepy. That's all I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> And then Elena thinks she knows who the killer is. She tells the conductor that she thinks it's the magician. And they go to Doc's cabin. They open the door and Doc's cabin is a bloody mess. I just wrote blood everywhere. Blood, blood, blood. <laughs> the conductor finds Doc's body in the overhead baggage compartment. Yeah, he opens it and the body falls out. Well, the body falls out and then... 
shortly followed by a severed head, Karen. Yep, the decapitated head. Not a very good one either. (laughs) And then then Jamie Lee screams to along with the train whistle, which happens often in this movie. Makes sense. The conductor gets everyone out of the car where the magic show is. And the last one he takes out is the assistant, right? Yeah, he's trying to lock the magician in his room. And this is when he says, there's coffee, ma'am. We got hot coffee, ma'am. Come on. And then he says, come on, let's get out here. And then the assistant says, Ken, I'll get you some coffee. He calls, she calls her, calls him Ken too, right there. But mm, I thought he, again, I, I misheard it. So, but they leave everyone, he gets everyone out of the car, except for the magician. Then he locks and changes the door. So the magician is locked in. And I was thinking, well, he's Harry Houdini. Houdini. That's, that ain't gonna that's, what, keep I, him out. that's what I thought too, <laughs> except it's on the other side of the door. But I was thinking, yeah, he could, he can totally get, get out. So they put Elena into an old unused car cabin. And once again, yeah. the guy doesn't really, I guess they searched it thoroughly they, before they put her in there. Cause he just like, huh, this hasn't been used in a while. Just sets her in there. Don't mind the dust. <laughs> so, Yeah. And he does the old, I'll be right outside the door. With an axe. And I, and I said, why doesn't he just stay in the room with her? Maybe, maybe she wants her privacy. I wouldn't. <laughs> Because if he gets killed out there, she'll never know it. That's just a trope that I never understood. But Elena does check her closet and she finds a coat hanger. Did you catch that? No, I didn't. So I thought this was going to be, that was like, I thought that was like a throwback to Halloween. Oh, yeah. I thought she was going to like stab the killer with the coat hanger, just like she did to Michael Myers. But she doesn't, but I. Not with a coat hanger. No, but. I guess word spreads that they think the magician is the killer because now all the kids want to kill him. (laughs) I have the conductor stops the mob mentality. Yep. And the conductor stops them. Next, we see the guy guarding Elena's door has a sword, sword through him, Karen. (laughs) A sword. Sword. A magician sword through him. Yeah, it's a sword. And we see somebody grabbing the axe. Next, the conductor goes to talk to the magician. But he... They can't find him, Karen. Nope, they where, cannot. Where could he be? They he locked him in that car. But he's a magician. And you know what Harry great Houdini. searchers they are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to search everywhere. Next, we see a person with the same Max Mitchie had on earlier, the old woman mask, goes to kill Elena with the axe. The killer strikes Elena, but it's a doll, Karen. It's, it's one of the, the blow-up blow up doll. doll. Elena did the old switcheroo, I wrote. (laughs) And she comes out of the closet and stabs the guy in the back with a sword. Yeah, that was smart, I thought. Where'd she get a sword? She probably might, maybe she pulled it out from the guy. I don't know. Whatever. So next, the killer chases after Elena. Eventually, Elena reaches a dead end and the killer starts to strangle her. And rips out her earring, one of her earrings. <laughs> yeah, just for extra blood, I wrote. Yeah, just for fun. And then Elena sprays him with a water from fire extinguisher. And it's very effective, I thought. <laughs> well, wait. So she fights him off and he hits, and she uses a fire extinguisher on him. So let me tell you about a fire extinguisher. All right. Is it a chemical fire extinguisher? I don't think it is. I don't. I, well. It looks like a water to me. Oh, I thought it was a chemical because... I can tell you that that is very, it should have been much more effective because my brother, Billy, <laughs> in a party situation where everyone wanted, was, wanted, wanted a smoke filled room, wanted a no, little was fog, highly intoxicated fog. <laughs> with his friends, one of his friends, Mark, I won't say your last name, sprayed him with a fire extinguisher in the face, blinded him. And he had to go to the hospital and was had his eyes wrapped up for like, I don't know, days to see if he was going to be able to see again. My mom ripped Mark a new one when he called because he didn't remember. He didn't know where Billy was. He called our house at home to find out where he was. And my mom let him know he had to go for eye tests 
for six months after that where they'd poke needles in his eyes. Oh, my God. So it is very effective <laughs> if you much more effective than in this movie, unless you're right, unless it was a water one and not it a looked like water one. to me. Because if it was chemical, he would have been down if he would not have been able to see her. And we yeah. know that from anecdotal evidence, but it was very scary. Yeah. Imagine. So Elena. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I tell him. And you tell your kids when they get out of the car, right? Make good choices. <laughs> that's right. It's always fun until someone can't see. Someone gets said, an eye put out. Not like me who had a drunken party, got sprayed with a fire extinguisher, drove myself to the emergency room when I couldn't see and showed up drunk as a skunk. I said, the university hospital people, it must be like, Jesus effing Christ. It's a Friday night and this is what we have to deal with. <laughs> okay, sorry, I digress. So no, Elena gets to the crew car, I guess, and locks herself in a cage. It's like an office kind Chicken of. Chicken wire cage, I don't know. Might have been like a money counting cage or something. Yeah. It reminded me of that. Like, But the killer grabs a large metal bar. It looks like a pry bar, crowbar, large one, and tries to impale her first with it. But then he begins prying the lock off the cage with the bar. And he's breaking all the lights, too. Yeah, he is. So it's dark. And then I have Elena grabs, or Elena stabs him with a letter nail thing. <laughs> Yeah, what are those called i, I couldn't know. come up with i couldn't either that's the best i could do it's like at a diner when they are done with the bill and they put it on it's a pointy it's a piece metal. of wood with a spike up through it and, and like, you put the yeah when you're the notes done with on some, it when it's done yeah so they don't but blow I, away i guess that's what get i lost? said i don't know the, the pointy thing <laughs> the letter pointy thing that's what i said i don't know what that's called but I thought she stabbed him in the eye, which is when I so thought I. it went back to Halloween, you know, that she got him right in the eyeball. So they struggle some more and they, he chases after Elena and they're in between cars and Elena manages to kick him off the train, I guess. Then the conductor finds Elena and brings her in, but we see bloody hands grabbing onto the side of the train, Karen. See, I didn't see that. Didn't? No. So I was yep. surprised. There was a shot of bloody hands. And the conductor says, all right, we're 15 minutes from this train station. You think she's going to make it? And she's only Elena, got 15 minutes. That's right. Elena is sleeping. But they leave Elena in the train car by herself again. And we see the killer through the window, Karen, outside the train car. Yeah, he's hanging out on top of the train. I mean, how hard do you think that is to do? Mm -hmm. they're always in movies people are always on top of moving trains well this is not even trains, on top he's on the side like crawling down it so i don't know like spider-man yeah you know but you gotta figure a train what do you think that train goes 40 <laughs> miles per hour at least and he's just hanging on like hanging in the window or when the people are walking along the top of the train yeah. i don't know but yeah i was surprised to see him the mask in the window. That's masks creep me out. I don't like masks at all. Yeah. And then Jackson's girlfriend, well, she leaves and she, the door opens and she comes back in and we, we think it's the killer, of course, but no, it's Jackson's girlfriend. And she asked Elena to come on back now to where the others are. It's, it's mellowing out. <laughs> We're kind of over it now. Come on back in. And then they start walking back and we keep seeing start startle scares. I wrote. Every time something moves, everybody jumps. <laughs> Next, Elena is at the end of the train on the caboose. Well, yeah, the conductor sees the light of the town. So yeah. they're almost there. Starts to slow down. And then I'm like, what the fuck? Elena is at the back of the train outside. <laughs> yeah. What? what? Caboose. Yeah. Why are you there? Just stay in the train. But she goes back in and apparently she's in the magician's, like his quarters. And finds his luggage with a red rose in it and a scrapbook. And she's starting to look through the scrapbook. Yeah, and she realizes it's not. Well, I don't know if she does or not. But as she's looking through the scrapbook, the box where they do the sword trick opens up and David Copperfield is in there and he's all sorted up. <laughs> right? He's in pieces. Yeah, he gone. Apparently that trick didn't work for him. 
So Elena goes to warn the brake man. She finds him and he's not the brake man. He's not the brake man. <laughs> he he's is not Kenny. Charlie. Yeah. But this is where we learn. You want to explain this? <laughs> that it's not that he's he's not the magician. Well, he's he wearing starts, a mask. He's taking off the mask and she's having flashbacks to it's not the magician, it's the magician's assistant. Correct. So Kenny has disguised himself as a woman, and Jamie Lee Curtis is sitting watching him and realizing who it is. Yeah. And it's Charlie. Kenny. Yeah, Charlie's uniform. Elena keeps apologizing to him, you know, saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, she is I, she's legitimately remorseful about the whole thing, you know. And it's bothered her for years. Yeah. But he doesn't believe her. No. So he says, he kept saying, kiss me, Elena just like she did to him, you know, kiss me, Elena. And so she does. Yeah. And then he just goes nuts. Yes. And Kenny starts spinning just like he did three years ago. <laughs> and a piece of cloth comes out of nowhere again, just like <laughs> three years ago. Yes. And Wikipedia explains it as the kiss causes Kenny to relive his memories from the prank and drives him deeper into insanity. But she never kissed him in the first place. No, she didn't. And he didn't even kiss. Did he kiss the cadaver or did he just see that it was a cadaver? Maybe he did kiss Maybe it. Did. I don't know. Don't know. But the conductor comes running in with a shovel and knocks him off the train as it's going over a trestle. And Kenny falls, falls, falls into a frozen river and floats away. He killed Kenny. Then <laughs> the train chugs away. Credits. It's the end. The end. So Kenny falls into the icy river. So there is a chance for a sequel because they never know. Yeah. His body could have been preserved in the icy river, Karen. Well, he did just have a concussion. Basically, he was just hit with a shovel. I mean, he did look, it was dark. So I couldn't tell. Was he face down in the river? But that doesn't kill a killer. Was there no. a terror train too? Nope. It was not. Not even the rumors of one, Karen, apparently. Mm. So, Karen, anything you were pleasantly surprised by in this 1980s slasher classic? Was I surprised? Pleasantly surprised. You know, I don't know if I can think of anything. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is a good actress. No, but what's that. up with her teeth? She a smoker. I bet she's a smoke. She was a smoker, wasn't she? Maybe. Yeah. She looks like it. I noticed, like, especially the scenes with her and David. David's teeth are nice and nice and pearly white. And there was a kind I of wonder gray. if David was already doing the show, the show no. circuit by then. Um, some of the magic tricks were nice. I was pleasantly surprised by that, I'd say. I always wanted to learn stuff like that, but never had the perseverance to stick with it a lot of hand stuff was good yeah i thought i thought that was nice touch nice distraction in the movie kind of liked how there was like a whole magic undertone of the thing too with the conductor doing his magic and yeah he's, you know, it's I, like him trying to figure out who the killer is it's kind of like him trying to figure out a magic trick how, how they do that that kind of stuff that's deep I just like the whole, hey, yeah, I, I would Karen, say. Karen, it's me. It's true. It's true. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I think the, you're right. I think the, I was pleasantly surprised by the magic and the, the way they intertwined it with everything. I got, I got nothing else. Anything, is you were disapp anything you were disappointed in? I don't know. I guess I, to be honest, I didn't really care for it overall. I don't know if I've just seen too, we've watched too many it seemed of them. to drag on. It did. And it, it's the same, you know, with Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> and then the Halloween, one, you know, like it just, I don't know. I guess maybe. I mean, they did almost have me convinced that it was David Copperfield, even though I kind of read the plot beforehand. And I was like, wait, did I read that right? Did I thought I he, I don't think he was ever in any other movies. And I, if he was, he probably played himself. You know, and I didn't think he was a bad actor. He was creepy. He played his role well. So that's another thing I should say I was pleasantly surprised by. I don't, like I said, I don't know if I've seen too many of them, but it's just too much of the same stuff. 
soundtrack kind of sucked. I thought, I mean, it was eighties, but it wasn't, you know, there was no like big, Ooh, the big yeah. movie tie into Huey Lewis or anybody. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody wanted to be tied into it. I think for a minute there, there was a song at the beginning that kind of thought that almost sounds like Duran Duran for a minute there, but no, no, it was not. It's just one of those movies where they just make the teenagers all about sex. And okay, I get it, whatever. Well, there was there was more pot smoking than sex, Karen. No, but the girls run off with the the boys. The they were all paired up, and then they had no problem pretty much going off with someone else. And it's a it's a trope, which is fine, and I get it. But like, eh, I, I just don't really. That's a, I think, no offense, a guy thing where they think all the girls are just going to go off and you know have sex with everybody. I just like, eh, come on. It's just not how it is. And I lived the eighties. So I, you know, did you, did you hear, I guess not enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's I just disappointed in that. Well, Were you I, disappointed in anything? I Greg, think I, I think I said just the drug on could have been like a half hour shorter. Could have, <laughs> than it for was. sure. Yeah. The music kind of sucked. I just didn't um, get to why the, what the relationship between Elena and the conductor was, why that yeah. was so strong. It was weird. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, they needed it, but. So what kind of cocktail rating we give in this film, Karen? I'm leaning towards a four. So am I. <laughs> and I, again, I don't know if it's because I've just it's... seen one too many of these. Cause I don't but think we've given was... some pretty good movies threes, you know? True. It's... I just didn't think it was very good. But if you like these kind of movies, it's fine. But for me, I'm kind of done with these movies. I don't want to see any more of these. Like, <laughs> eh, at least not for a while. I think October was enough for me with all the ones we did. All right. Comments on the drink, Karen. The Purple Hooter Shooter. A Groucho Marx favorite, supposedly. I could use a mixer. I would put some tonic or... A nice citrusy soda. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little strong and heavy on the vodka. But I like the raspberry. I like the undertone. So I would. If I'm sipping it. a shot. I mean, I guess if you good. if you slammed it, it's probably there. You go. What do you think? Oh my god, that's so much better. <laughs> Kidding. Very vodka. So if vodka is your thing, you're gonna love it. All right, Karen. Anything we learned today? Baptists can't touch cards i forgot about that magicians sleight of hand tricks they think began in ancient egypt learned a little about chemical fire extinguishers true <laughs> that they would be very effective their ability to blind an assailant mm -hmm. or a friend you're partying with whatever <laughs> your party host whichever <laughs> We learned that neither one of us knows what that thing is that you stick letters onto or no, bills when no. you're done. So if anyone knows that, please email us. Anything else we learned today? I don't know. I can't think of anything else. Can you? Well, no. we learned Groucho this... Marx's favorite drink. Never trust anyone in a mask. That's what I'm going to say we learned. Okay. Anything else, Karen? I don't think so. I believe the next film is your choice then, Karen. It is. What are you going to subject us to this week or next week? So I've chosen the 1941 film, The Wolfman. Okay. Any, any reason you chose this film, Karen? Well, we've decided to do wolf movies all this month. All the month of January? Yes. Because this full moon is known as the wolf moon so yep january so is werewolf month on the scary spirits podcast we're theming it out and we're starting with the original yeah, is it the original in my book it is I don't know. is it the first werewolf movie ever oh i don't know i don't know was there any silent ones you think i don't know it'd be a good silent one though wouldn't it yeah i know like one one of um Edison, that thieving bastard, one of his first films was Frankenstein. <laughs> well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was 
you know, whatever, 10, 15 minutes long, but one of the first Edison films. All right, Karen, do you have a cocktail for our? Oh, I do. The Wolfman from 1941 from Universal. It is called the Tequila Moonrise. Our second tequila drink. Yep. It's very similar to the first one in a way. So you're going to need tequila, cracked ice, grenadine, orange slice, and a maraschino cherry. And then you're going to (laughs) need carbonated orange soda, like orangina or San Pellegrino, and more grenadine. So this is from the True Blood cookbook. Wow, you're going to have to send me that one because I ain't probably going to find that one online. True Blood eats drinks and bites. I used to watch True Blood all the time. I love that show. Went a little off the rails at the end, as they all do, but the first couple of seasons, I never missed it because vampires. So anyone you need to thank, Karen? You know, I was thinking, I think we need to thank our logo designer because our logo is pretty cool, if I must say so myself. And we owe it all to him. So if you're looking for a great logo, contact Chad Savage. At Sinister Visions. He's got a lot of cool stuff, but I like our logo. And I was just Sinistervisions.com. We should let everybody know who did that. So thank you, Mr. Savage. <laughs> yep. Here's lots what about of, you? Lots of cool stuff. Um, well, I need to thank verse 13 again, Karen for letting us use their music on the podcast. All their info's in the show notes. I'll put Chad's in there as well. A link to his website and whatnot. Yeah, really do check him out. And verse 13. Probably yeah. way more interesting than this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Anything else, Karen? Well, happy new year. Yes, happy new year. And we should say go Bearcats. Yes, absolutely. The, the big game is just a few days away, Karen. We're all overly invested. <laughs> it's just a football game. It's just a football game. That's right. I hope next year is better than this. In what way? No pandemic, you mean? Or Every way. Any, I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> I agree. Go science. I'm kind of over it all. And especially this Friday night, please. Drink responsibly. Yes. We want to see you in 2022. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Scary Spirits podcast, where the movies might be iffy, but the drinks are always solid. We would love to hear from you. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast. Or go to our website, scaryspirits.com. And if you want the direct line, email us at info at scaryspirits.com. If you really want to help us out, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And remember, always drink responsibly. See you next week.